Right, so we've got another story from the House of Cats, and this time it's a traditional tale from Bulgaria called The Fish That Flew and the Hare That Swam. Georgie's wife, Anna, was pretty and plump, a good housewife and an even better cook. But could she talk? She talked to anyone. Her mother, her neighbours, the market store holders, or a total stranger who'd only stopped to ask the way. She'd talk about anything and everything, whatever came into her head. So, when Georgie's plough turned up on an old... Excuse me. So when Georgie's plough turned up an old Roman pot full of gold coins one day, he knew it was only a matter of time, and a very short time at that, before the world and his wife and the governor too got to hear of it. And the governor being no believer in finders keepers, the two of them would be lucky to end up with the odd coin or two as a reward for finding the gold in the first place. So he didn't want to tell her. Then he had an idea. He went to the market and he bought a fine fat fish and a live hare. He stashed the poor hare in the fishing net he'd set close to the riverbank and left the fish high up in the wild cherry tree. Then he went to fetch Anna. Guess what I found, he cried. Not a word to a soul. It looks like a pot of gold coins. Do you want to come and help me dig it up? Of course he did, she did. So they went and dug up the gold. On the way home, he said, Do you know what I fancy? I fancy a fine fat fish for supper to celebrate. Fish for supper, said Anna. You'll be lucky. You'll never catch anything in those nets of yours and the market's closed by now. Maybe this is our lucky day, said Georgie. First I found that pot of gold. Now, oh, look up there in that cherry tree. Isn't that a fish? A fine fat one by the look of it, said Anna. Up you go then, fetch it down. So up he went and fetched it down. On they jogged until they came to the river. I might as well check my nets as we're passing, said Georgie. Not that I do ever catch anything, except today seems to be my lucky day. Well, well, look at this. A live hare caught in my fishing net. <gasps> a fish and a hare, said Anna. We shall eat well tonight. And a pot of gold, too. Mind you tell nobody about that, he said. I won't tell a soul, she promised. So how was it then that her mother was soon in on the secret? How come all the neighbours were all in the know? All of them promised not to breathe a word, of course. So, however did the governor get to hear the news? News that brought him galloping hotfoot on his mule with his clerk following behind him on his donkey. About that pot of gold you found, said the governor. What pot of gold? said Georgie. According to your wife, ah, oh, my wife, Georgie shook his head. She's a sad case, your honour. You won't get a word of sense out of her. I'll be the judge of that, said the governor. Send for Georgie's wife. Anna came, fresh from stabling the governor's mule along with the clerk's donkey. What pot of gold? Oh, that pot of gold. You must remember, Georgie. You found it the same day you caught the fish in the cherry tree. Georgie gave the governor a look at him to say, You see what I mean? Not one word of sense. He caught a fish in the cherry tree, said the governor. I thought it was a bit odd myself, said Anna. I mean, fish can't fly, can they? Or climb trees. But when Georgie caught a hare in his fishing net the very same day, the governor frowned. He looked at Georgie and Georgie shrugged his shoulders. He caught a hare in his fishing net, said the governor. Alive and kicking, wasn't it, Georgie? And I thought it must have just been one of those days when odd things happen. Oh, she has odd days like this, sighed Georgie. I don't know if she makes these things up or whether she really believes they happen. Oh, making things up, am I scuffed, Anna? And I suppose the clerk's donkey was making things up just now when I heard him tell the governor's mule that the clerk was head over heels in love and planning to run off with... But at this point, the clerk was taken by such a fit of coughing that nobody heard the rest. After Georgie thumped the clerk hard on the back. What was that you were saying about uh, my clerk? said the governor. And it didn't answer. She just kept rattling on. Call that news, says the governor's mule. That's nothing compared to what my master's been up to. He's only been paying for that lovely new house of his out of money he greens off the tax. Enough, cried the governor. A talking mule? Ridiculous. 
You're right, Georgie. Your wife is clearly off her head. Off he galloped on his mule with the clerk jogging behind on his donkey. Well, what was all that about? said Georgie. Hannah smiled. I know I talk too much, she said, but I do know how to listen too. Every woman in town knows the clerk sweet on the governor's daughter. Maybe they're planning to run away together. And as for the governor creaming money off from the taxes he collects, was there ever a governor who didn't? The wonder is they go on fooling themselves that nobody knows. Now, about that gold you found. What gold? said Georgie. Don't worry, she said. I won't tell another soul. Poof, said Georgie. Who was there left to tell? But wisely, he kept that thought to himself. So, oh, I enjoyed that one as well. That was fun. That was the fish that flew and the hare that swam. And it's a traditional tale from Bulgaria. In the book, The House of Cats.